Okay, now we're going to do the gram stain. The gram stain is a differential stain because it's going to differentiate between different types of bacteria, gram positive and gram negative. Now you've learned about this um, in lecture or in your online lecture that you're doing. And so this is the procedure that we're going to use. Now this is one of the most important stains. When a doctor um, suspects a bacterial infection, say in the lungs or in the blood or something, he's going to send a sample to the lab and then the lab is going to do a differential stain, a gram stain, and it takes maybe about 10 minutes to get a result so you can quickly distinguish between the two. One of the importance of the gram stain, or the most important, is depending on the type of wall that a bacteria has, whether it's gram positive or gram negative, then you can tar target that particular bacteria with a type of antibiotic. Um, gram negative bacteria, for example, are resistant to penicillin. Okay, so this is a really important stain to know. Now it has several different stains that we're going to use. Okay, so what I want to point out is on page 35 of your lab manual, um, it says in the procedure, it says number one, prepare and fix a smear. So you would go through the same procedure that we did last time, where you put the bacteria on the slide, let it dry, and after it's dry, you run it through the flame a couple of times. That's the fixing, okay? So remember I said last time that you need to do that every time before you do a staining procedure unless otherwise told, okay? So once we've fixed it, and I'm gonna pretend I have a slide that has been fixed, okay? I have my slide with my bacteria on it. Now I'm gonna to go to page 36 where it has the actual gram stain procedure. Okay, so the first thing it says to do is cover the smear with crystal violet. So right here is crystal violet. Um, these are stains and they will stain your clothes and your hands, so just be careful, use gloves, or if you like, you can use the paper, the, not the paper clips, the clothespins. So it says flood it, so I'm gonna flood it, you just cover it, and it says for 30 seconds, once again, if it goes 45 seconds, that's okay. All right, now I've waited my 30 seconds, and you're always gonna rinse between steps. So I have my water bottle, and I'm gonna rinse. Okay. Now, um, the next thing that it says to do is um, put the Graham's iodine on. And that's this one right here, Graham's iodine. And it says for about 10 seconds. This is the mordant. So if it's a Graham positive cell, the iodine will make a complex with the crystal violet, um, pulling it into the wall. And then when we go to the next step and it's dehydrated, those crystals will stay in the wall. If you skip the mordant, you'll lose your crystal violet and end up with a false negative, okay? That sits for about 10 seconds, and then it says rinse smear. So I'm gonna rinse it. And remember, never spray onto this, the stain itself. Okay, the next one is decolorizing with alcohol. This is the one step that you have to really be specific at what you do. If you leave it on too long, you'll decolorize gram-positive bacteria. If you don't leave it on long enough, you will, um, not take it off if it's gram negative. Okay, not decolorize. So you wanna do this for, it's not really a time period, you, you don't sit it on there and let it sit, you actually run it off. Now if you've ever colored your hair, um, this is kind of the same procedure. After you've colored your hair, you rinse your hair until you don't see any color coming off. That's the same thing. So right here, and this is um, step E on um, page 36. So I'm gonna hold it at 45 degree angle. And this is a glass bottle, sometimes we use these. And um, you just let the alcohol drip on there until you do not see any color coming off the bottom of the slide. Okay, that's when it's been decolorized long enough. Then you immediately rinse with water because you don't want any of the alcohol left on there to continue to decolorize. After we've rinsed for wa with water, then we're gonna put the saffron in on, which is the counter stain. So we had the crystal violet was the primary stain. We had Graham's iodine as the mordant. We had um, either ethyl alcohol or acetone alcohol as our decolorizer. And then we have saffron in as our counter stain. So if the bacteria are gram negative and the crystal violet washed off with the alcohol, then they're gonna turn pink. Okay, so we're gonna put this on. This one's clogged. So we'll pretend it goes on there. So we're staining with crystal violet. 
and I'm sorry, we're staining with saffron in. Okay, that's the counter stain. And that's going to sit for about 30 seconds. Once again, if you go over a little bit, it's okay. After the saffron in has sat, then we're going to add, or we're going to rinse with water one more time. Okay, now we've worked all really hard at doing this, so we don't want to take all our stain off or our bacteria. So once again, dry the bottom first, fold the paper over, gently blot dry. And you don't have to dry it completely, you know, right away. You can let it dry on its own. Sometimes you can tilt it up like this and let it dry. The key is that it has to be dry and not have any excess stain on it when you put it on the microscope. So that was the gram stain procedure.